Hello and welcome back or welcome to Miss Finance if this is your first time on the channel. So I've had a special request from an individual to go through the VAT due on acquisitions from other EC member states. So the box two on a standard fat return. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so if we look at a standard VAT return, so if we look at boxes one to five, in box one, we have VAT due on sales. And then as we know, in box two, we have VAT due on acquisitions from other EC member states. And then in box three, we have the total VAT due from box one plus box two. Box four is VAT reclaimed on purchases and other inputs. And then box five is just the net VAT to be paid to HMRC or reclaimed by you. So this is box three less box four, in effect. So if your amount of purchases outweighs the amount of sales that you've got on the VAT return, then you're due a reclaim from HMRC. But if your sales are more than purchases, then you owe HMRC. So if you used to have a look at any VAT return, it will look exactly like this. The box might be a little bit straighter, but, but you get the idea. So here in box one, again, we've got the output VAT. And then in box three, again, I've just written there that is, we've got box one and box two. And then also we have input VAT in box four. So VAT on sales is known as output VAT because it's going out to HMRC. And VAT on purchases is known as input VAT because you'll be reclaiming the VAT back, so money coming into the business. So that's a good way of remembering that if you can't quite get your head around it. So we've gone through all the other boxes on there, but let's have a look in closer detail then at what box two is and why it's there. So what exactly does box two VAT due on acquisitions from other EC member states actually mean or refer to? So this relates to purchases made from another EU member state and is the VAT element of this. So that might, might surprise a few people, it's the purchases. So HMRC have a list of those countries that are included in the EU member states. If you make a purchase from any one of those countries, then the VAT is going to go into this box. So if a business has acquired goods from other EU countries, the amount of acquisition tax due on the cost of the goods needs to go into box two and the value of goods and services will be multiplied by the VAT rate to give you a value to go into that box two and the actual applicable VAT rate is the UK rate so we don't care what VAT rate they charge in that country we're going to be applying our own VAT rate in the UK to those goods. So why do we do this in box two? So if another EU country sells goods to the UK where the goods are delivered they cannot charge VAT in the country where you make your purchase. Instead, they have to apply VAT in the country where the goods are delivered. So that was just, that's a rule that HMRC has created. And in fairness, there is a little bit of logic behind it. So the idea behind it is so that small businesses do not have to register for VAT in every single EU country. So normally, you buy a product now, because you are VAT registered, you can claim that VAT back on the product. So VAT is passed down the line until the consumer ends up paying the VAT. So the very, very person at the end, known as the consumer, they will pay VAT. Now, EU VAT aims to achieve that same effect. So that business A can trade with business B inside of the EU and are able to pass VAT charge down the line to the ultimate consumer without having to deal with complex red tape or bureaucracy in each individual country. So if we take an example, if you've got business A in the UK, and excuse my drawing, and they import £260,000 worth of goods from Germany who are in the EU for the VAT purposes, then business B in Germany, let's draw this here, are also VAT registered. So we've got a VAT registered company in the UK, a VAT registered company in Germany. So those purchases, those goods are now treated as if you bought them in the UK at say 20% VAT rate. The German business, however, will charge you no VAT or 0%. So you might think that this is weird 
and you might be asking yourself, well, why would Germany charge 0%? Now, this is because box 2 on the VAT return contributes towards total sales or output VAT. So you've got this figure, this VAT, on the 260 grand. However, in box 4, we would have 20% times the 260,000 pounds. In box 4, however, we would have 20% times the 260,000 pounds to account for the input VAT. So there's now an actually nil effect on that. And if we actually have a look at the VAT return here, you can see there that in box 2, you'd have this 20% for the output VAT. And then in box 4, you'd have the 20% there as well. So there is absolutely nil effect on VAT, on your VAT return. Because we'd have the 52k in box 2 and 52k in box 4. So one minus the other is nothing. So I hope this video has been helpful to you and I hope it's answered the question. Um, if you've got any further questions about the box, the VAT due and acquisitions, then by all means put them in the comment section and I shall have a look and get back to you. If you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up because it helps with the YouTube algorithm. Consider subscribing because I will be putting out more videos and otherwise I shall see you on the next video.